Arun Jaitley, the BGP's leader of the opposition, is saying the Indian media is on trial. This after tremors, literally tremors, went through the entire media industry as developments overnight pointed to a high-profile editor of Pehelka, Tarun Tejpal, being charged with sexual assault by a younger colleague. The colleague, 22 years old, the journalist who works for and worked for Mr. Tehelka under his supervision, under his mentorship, has accused the editor of sexual assault. Mr. Jaitley has taken it a step further, saying that the email, that the email account written by the journalist to her superiors at Tehelka clearly make out a charge of rape. He's now saying that how the media handles this will say a lot about whether the media is guilty of double standards. Remember, we've all been outraging after an intern spoke about being sexually harassed by a recently retired Supreme Court judge. On the program today, we're looking at whether it's politics, whether it's the judiciary or whether it's in the media, is the stranglehold of sexual harassment following women everywhere? And what kind of questions does the Tehelka controversy raise for us in the media. Let's take a look first at the major developments in the story today. It was given to her. He stepped down, which is not something she had asked for. It was over and above that. Surely, if you all are feeling more aggrieved than the journalist herself, I cannot answer that. Defiant, despite the massive criticism online and otherwise over the past 24 hours, the backlash began immediately after Tehelka magazine's managing editor, Shoma Chaudhary, announced that the magazine's founder and editor-in-chief, Tarun Tejpal, had stepped down after he admitted to sexually assaulting a colleague. The incident at an event organized by the magazine in Goa is not yet a police case, but the state's chief minister has said he could still act on it. Prima facie crime has taken place. Preliminary inquiry does not require any complaint from anyone. While Goa Chief Minister Manohar Parekar has ordered a preliminary inquiry, the police are also trying to contact the journalist so as to record her statement. While that will certainly bolster their case, they've also asked a five-star hotel where the offence took place to preserve CCTV footage as that could serve as crucial evidence in the absence of eyewitnesses. On the receiving end of questions all of today, Managing Editor Shoma Chaudhary insisted it was not a legal case yet but said the Helka is in the process of setting up an anti-sexual harassment panel. By this evening, a harassment committee will definitely be set up. Committee is something which, according to the law, the Helka should have had in place anyway. Not just that, the magazine should have set up one or even gone to the police when the girl first complained, as provided in law. Now it has been directed by the National Commission of Women to set up such a panel. Though this had been one of the demands by the assaulted journalist, it may not be enough. She has told NDTV that she is deeply disappointed by Tehelka's response, that she is not satisfied as her testimony has not been circulated within the magazine, even though Tejpal's letter was. The letter she is referring to was sent by Tarun Tejpal to Shoma Chaudhary, where he said it was a bad lapse of judgment, an awful misreading of the situation that led to an unfortunate incident. He said, I have already apologized unconditionally, but feel impelled to atone further must do the penance that lacerates, therefore offering to recuse myself from the Helka for six months. It's been a couple of weeks since the alleged assault, but Tejpal's resignation and leak of internal mails has brought the matter out in the open. But besides the criminal inquiry probing the culpability of Tarun Tejpal, will there be any action on the management for their belated response? With Pooja Talwar and Tejas Mehta, this is Tonima Viswas for NDTV. And whether it's in the social media, in the mainstream media or in political circles, the reactions have been scathing. Let's start with what Arun Jaitley has put out on Facebook. Arun Jaitley is saying the Indian media is on trial. Continuing in this blog post, he says the offence of rape as amended by Parliament are squarely made out in the victim's email. He goes on to ask why was the offence not allowed to be reported forthwith. Of course, this is a controversy that is also acquiring political overtones because in the same statement, in the same posting on Facebook, Arun Jaitley goes on to say, just because the assailant has connections in the Congress party, the nation is deprived of the sage advice of Mr. P. Chidambaram, the caustic comments of Kapil Sibyl and the exaggerated tweets of Manish Tiwari. So, 
This is a controversy that is, of course, now reflecting the larger political battle in this country. But the important point there uh, coming from Arun Jaitley is he's saying that the victim's email is making out the charge of rape. The Editor's Guild, which is, of course, a conglomerate of some of the most senior media voices in this country, has issued an e equally uh, strong and scathing statement. The Editor's Guild in its statement has said the self-proclaimed atonement, those, th that is the phrase that Tarun Tejpal used uh, when he announced his decision to step down for a period of stick, uh, six months. But the Editor's Guild is saying that self-proclaimed atonement is hardly a remedy to this charge of sexual assault. It's going on to make the argument that even if the journalist at the heart of the storm, the journalist who says that she was sexually assaulted in Goa after Tehelka's a think fest there, even if this young woman does not complain, this this is a violation of the law and the criminal justice system must kick in. It must kick in on its own to investigate and possibly prosecute Mr. Tejpal. On its part, the Helka has continued to maintain that action has been taken. In its initial comments, Shoma Chaudhary, the managing editor of the Helka, described this as an internal matter and said that the journalist in question had only asked for an internal probe. On the Prague Stops here today, we're asking... What does this reflect about our society? We're looking at women in the workplace and we're asking whether the stranglehold of harassment is ever going to leave us. We're also asking whether this is all about powerful men abusing authority in case after case. Let's introduce our panel now. We're joined by Minakshi Arora. She's, of course, a senior advocate and also somebody who's been associated with the watershed Vishakha judgment from the Supreme Court that first laid down the guidelines that should be followed by all companies, public and private, sexual harassment guidelines. Minakshi Arora was associated with that case. Also joining us is a uh, well-known lawyer, Malvika Rajkotia. She's uh, going to weigh in with her comments. She's been an outspoken uh, feminist and as uh, someone associated with uh, gender rights. From Singapore today, joining us is Sanjoy Roy. We all know him among his other roles as the organizer of the Jaipur Literature Festival, a very successful festival, but he's also a close friend of Tarun Tejpal, has known him for uh, many, many years. And we'll be joined in a moment by well-known author Shobha Day as well. Minakshi Arora, your first thoughts at what we've seen unfold uh, with this entire Tehelka controversy. Very strong statements coming in from the political class, from the industry, from the editor's guild. Arun Jaitley saying that the victim's email may takes out the charge of, of rape, according to him, according to the amended new laws. Now, my question is this. If, if the woman at the heart of the storm does, does not go to the police, what should be the responses from the legal system? Well, it has to be a complaint in the first case. She's the one who's a victim, and she will have to make out a complaint at the first instance. Uh, but having said that, you know, I, I take a very different view of what's been unfolding all over. I personally feel that Supreme Court laid down the Vishakha guidelines way back in 1997. It took the government 16 years to frame the legislation. Now, that's the kind of seriousness that the government put to this legislation. And everything started to act up only after the incident of December last year. We are heading now to a point where we are having more and more such cases being reported. I think it's about the time that the legislation is now in place, but people have still not constituted committees. There are no investigations still happening, very few of them. There are a lot of women who want to come forward and report. So this whole thing has to now move on and it has to be implemented. We had a law which the Supreme Court declared. It took time to bring in the legislation. Now it's a matter of implementation. And that's where okay. it seems to be headed today exactly. 